Welcome to The Boiling Point. I am Richie Ware. This is Stephen Taylor, and we are talking about gas pressure today. Now, gas pressure, Stephen, is something that um, can be a little difficult. Uh, you can really get confused on when they call in for a rental boiler. I know we have created something to make it a little easy, but I really just wanted to talk about um, gas pressure and just really get kind of the semantics of it and how it works. So, Yeah, it, you know, gas pressure is, is actually produced by gas pumping stations way out in the middle of nowhere. Okay. You'll see them, they're great big old things. And, and then the, all the gas lines are run underground and it's run to plants and run to this building, it's run everywhere. Um, we run into issues all the time with gas pressure. Every rental boiler, if they're running gas, we're gonna run into issues with gas pressure. One reason we built these up is because, you know, we'd send a regulator with a unit and they put the regulator in and, and they're designed they have to be designed to go in like this, upstream, downstream control line, so many pipe diameters away from the regulator, all that stuff to get it right. Well, they put the regulator in and set it here and put a 90 and right into the, to the gas train and, and no up, upstream, downstream dimensions put in there properly and the thing just wouldn't operate right. So then the technician have to cut it back out and redo it on the startup. The customer's upset because it wasn't done properly. So we. We just put these together and it simplifies, it takes all, all that out of the scenario. Mm -hmm. The big problem we run into is we tell them, okay, 75,000 pounder, I need 12 pounds into my gas train for that thing to, to burn properly. 12 pounds consistent from low to high fire. They say, yeah, we've got 12 pounds and they're gonna provide a regulator. We can provide a regulator 12 pounds. We get to the job site. If we haven't done our job on the front end, we get the tech gets to the job site and they find out they've got 12 pounds but they're also feeding their boiler off the same line. Mm. And mm. then we find out, we ask, okay, so you're gonna feed your boiler off the same line, is your line big enough to feed two boilers? Well, no, it's not. Okay, then I gotta feed steam into your system, you gotta bring your boiler down as I bring mine up so we don't overload that gas line. Okay. If I have to vent, it'll, your line's not big enough, I can't run my boiler at the same time. Okay. So there's just issues like that we run into on, on every job. What we try to do, is talk to the customer about what's your gas line? How much line are you running? How many 90s do you have in it? We try to do a pressure drop for them from where they're tying in to our boiler so we know what the pressure drop is and they size that line properly. Mm -hmm. We just do that for them on, on every rental job. So distance actually does matter? It makes, it's a huge, huge difference. Mm -hmm. and, and, and 90s are, are just, they're killers for gas flow. You know, we, we try to run uh, run a pressure drop for them, run the flow for them, let them know what the line is, uh, line size needs to be, so that they get the, the proper gas pressure and flow. Okay. People confuse pressure and flow. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, you know, we'll start the boiler up, it's got 12 pounds coming in, we get up to mid range and the pressure's dropped to eight, seven, six, then we can't fire the boiler. And they say, well, I've got, I had 12 pounds. Yeah, but you have to have the flow along with the 12 pounds. And that's right. what we try to, educate the customer, have them size that gas line so we don't have those issues on the startup. As far as the size of the pipe, okay, I mean, how is that really determined again? Just not, not necessarily length, but then just, just, just the know, size of the pipe. Inch, again, inch. It's, it's pressure and flow. Okay. And you can take a, a 10 inch diameter pipe and have 12 pounds on it, and I can flow 100,000 cubic feet an hour through it, but then you pull a two inch line off of it, I've still got 12 pounds there, but when I start trying to pull 100,000 cubic feet an hour through it. I mean, I, I may be able to get, you know, 5,000 cubic feet an hour through it and that's it. And then I'm gonna pull the pressure down to nothing that can't operate the boiler. So. Right, what's the formula that you use on that? I, for, for, a hundred, or for a fire two boiler, I use 4,100 cubic feet an hour per 100 horsepower. Okay. And then like a 75,000 pounder, I know it will burn 92,000 cubic feet an hour. So then I just go down from there. If I'm running a 60,000 pounder, you know, it's 88,000 cubic feet. I just know that because I've dealt with it so many, so many times. I just, I, I know what they are. Right. We, have a, we have a formula. Um, Alex built a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet actually, that we just plug the, the 90s and the valves and the length of pipe into it, tell it how much pressure drop we want through that piping, and it spits out what size pipe needs to be to get the flow we want to feed the boiler with. It's, right. it's a great tool, we use it every day. But certainly very important to make sure that we keep whatever pressure it is that is needed to the burner, that we keep that pressure to that burner. That Very has critical. to be stable from low high to, fi to high, low fire to high fire. And the other thing that, that you know, the reason they put a regulator in there is if, if the customer has 12 pounds coming to it, that's all great, well and good. 
But when we start firing that boiler and start pulling on that line and that pressure starts dropping to 10, 9, 8, then we lose the fire and we end up blowing, blowing the fire out in the boiler. We can't run it. Yeah. The same thing if he's got 25 pounds coming in, I can't take 25 pounds into the gas train. I can't control the firing rate. So we have to have a regulator and that regulator will keep that pressure at 12 pounds constant as long as we can keep the 25 pounds or whatever we sized it for. As long as we keep that steady into it, the outlet's gonna stay at, at 12 pounds regardless of how much flow I've got through that regulator. So I know that there's like a certain amount of gas pressure that's coming in from um, mm -hmm. the gas company, right? That's coming yep. in. Is it the burner that determines what gas pressure and, and, and that it's needing and, and why? I mean, because a lot of burners are different. A lot of them are different. Uh, it, it's the burner and the piping. The bur um, these high efficiency burners take a real high pressure drop across the head of that burner mm -hmm. in, in order because they're pre-mix. Okay. They're mixing air and gas before it ever gets to the, to the uh, nozzles or to the guns or to the lances, whatever the design is, the gas head. So they're, they're pre-mixing that, which takes a whole lot higher gas pressure than it would on a conventional burner that you could have, you know, 12 inches of manifold gas pressure and you've got all the, all the gas you need. Well, these new ones, you're gonna have to have two and a half, three pounds, six pounds on some of them, manifold pressure in order to, to fire the bore at rate. So it's, right. it's all about the, the design of the burner head and the fuel train feeding it. Okay, so you mentioned a term, manifold. So, I mean, we probably ought to Explain yeah, the what manifold that is. is reading the pressure on the gas head itself. Okay. That's what the manifold gas pressure is we all go by. And that's what the manufacturers, when they say that we need, you know, six inches of manifold gas pressure, that's what they're talking about. They're mm -hmm. not talking about pressure in the gas train. They're talking about on the manifold itself after it goes through the gas valves, goes through the butterfly valve, then you see what's on the manifold itself. Okay. And that, that changes. Um, based on, on the firing rate. So if you put a bunch of air from the combustion fan into the to the firebox, into right. the Morse tube, it puts back pressure on that manifold sure. and, and develops pressure itself. So then that gas pressure has to overcome that in order to get the gas out there and get it mixed. Right, so it's truly just, uh, it's, it's from the good combustion, I guess, that, that's needed in the burner that then the back it goes backwards, I guess, of what the gas pressure exactly. is needed. Exactly, it's a really combination of everything put together. Yeah. Lots yeah. of calculations that the burner and boiler manufacturers have to do. That's why the burner manufacturer, he has to know what, what the pressure drop through the boiler is, what the back pressure is gonna be through the boiler yeah. to design the burner itself. Right. So he knows how big the fan needs to be, how big the, 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 the gas valves and the gas train needs to be in order to, for him to be able to fire into that and get rate, he has to know what that back pressure is gonna be. Yeah, yeah, it's not a situation to where the Limps field or a power flame or whatever. It's, it's not going on just one boiler. It's going on a ton of different manufacturers. Yep. So uh, they have to size each one on that boiler itself. You can't take a burner and put it on a dozen different boilers and expect it to work. It's yeah. not designed that way. It's designed for that specific boiler. Yeah. Super information. A little bit technical. A little bit technical. Right? But yep. good information. Yep. So appreciate you hanging out. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Appreciate Steven hanging out again and bringing us some really good information. And you might even have to watch that a couple times uh, just to get all of that technical information, all the formulas and all the, uh, the, the gas pressure uh, with the manifold, all the other things that he came up with, good stuff. Um, just so maybe watch it a couple times. Again, you, you kind of heard that if you do have trouble, we've got these things taken care of, number one, to where we can put these uh, gas regulator stations in when, when renting a boiler makes it simple for you. Um, but you also heard that we've got the knowledge to be able to figure that out for you. Well, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you don't mind, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share those videos. Go out and check out all the videos, Steam Cultures, Jude with our weekly boiler tips, and we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.